I love book shopping when I'm on a vacation because I like going to used bookstores. I buy almost all of my books used. And I always love seeing what different things I can find and then what authors are popular in different places. It's just so much fun. So I went on vacation to New Hampshire for a week and I went to a lot of used bookstores. So let's go through what I got. And uh, I'll just say that it is like a goal of mine to reduce my physical TBR. And it's like there's this constant battle of like wanting to support used bookstores and um, and then actually like keeping up with the momentum of which I want to support used bookstores. But you know what? That's a that's a problem for a different video. Let's let's just get into it. So the first place I went, I found the two copies to complete my collection of Lord of the Rings. I'm doing a read of these right now, and I just found these. And when I was doing my read of my the first book, I found the first one in this version, and I was very surprised. I found all of them, but here they are. I've read The Two Towers, and I'm in the middle of The Return of the King right now. I just love old versions of like sci-fi and fantasies and I found these uh, for 50 cents each these old versions of the Chronicles of Narnia now I have not yet read the Chronicles of Narnia I've read like maybe the first few books when I was a child but I wouldn't even count it at this point because I don't remember anything uh, and I would have to do a reread so I have like this collection which is very very popular i feel like a lot of people have this collection and then i found uh five of the seven books in this collection which i'll show you the covers of them and they're actually in a different order so i don't know much about chronicles of narnia because i haven't read them but i do know that there's like the chronological order of like how it happens in narnia versus like the order it was published in and there's different suggested, debated reading orders. And this one is in like the most recent reading order from my understanding. I don't have the first two books in this one, which would be, I don't know. Um, but this one's in a different reading order. So book three would be The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Which, that's cute. Book four would be The Silver Chair. Book five is The Horse and His Boy. Book six is The Magician's Nephew. <laughs> I don't know why I love this cover so much. And did I say book five? That's book six. And then book seven is The Last Battle. Undisputed book seven. Which means I'm missing, what am I missing? The the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and Prince Caspian. Yep. So I'm going to be on the lookout for those now to complete this cute little set. At the same place that I got, I'm all out of order, the same place I got the Two Towers and the Fellowship of the Rings, I got Learning to Talk to Plants, which I just recently read about So and put on my TBR, so I was excited to find it because that means I'll actually probably read it relatively quickly. This is translated from the Catalan, Catalan, I don't know how I'm saying this right. Uh, the author is from Spain and it's a dealing with grief. So it says, Paula's partner has died in a car accident, but no one knows her true grief. Only hours before his death, Mauro revealed that he was leaving her for another woman. So um, it's kind of like her journey out of the grief or through the grief. So I'm excited for this one. And then I went to this Ladders thrift store, which had an amazing book selection and the paperbacks were 50 cents and the hardcovers were a dollar unless they were, they, they had something else on the cover. So I went a little cuckoo there. Um, I bought a lot of shit. 
We actually went twice because we liked it so much and I bought more on the second time. And I went a few days later and there was turnover already. I had seen like The Vanishing Half and um, oh, I think I saw another book and they were both gone, which they're popular books so it makes sense. But I got from there, St. Lucy's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves by Kate, what is it, by Karen Russell. So this one, I it is a short story collection. It takes place mainly in like the swamps of Florida. And I really like when a, uh, I really like a strong setting in a book and I like a vibe of a place. I've never been to Florida. So I'm intrigued to read this and I'm hoping for like a decent amount of local stuff happening. It's an expectation I have of the book, but yeah, I'm excited for this. I think that they're all younger protagonists, which could not work for me, but we bought it. I also got there The Office of Historical Corrections by Danielle Evans. This is also a short story collection. I have heard nothing but good things about this. She, it says it discusses, in a smart voice with x-ray insights, it discusses the subjects of race in U.S. history, and Evans considers how and why some people choose to confront history and others outrun it. So a lot of different perspectives from what I hear. I've seen great reviews of it. I was really excited to find this for a few dollars, um, especially given it's a relatively new, new release. So yeah, I'm excited for this one. Also there, I found The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This has been getting a lot of hype. Um, I'm a little trepidatious about this one. I read The Humans by him and really enjoyed it. But I'm not the biggest fan of books surrounding books. Um, I get annoyed by protagonists that love to read. And I, I don't like like the falling into a book thing. Or at least I haven't liked it how I've seen it. But I've heard really good things about this. And I did enjoy The Humans, which made me want to try it. And for a few bucks, I figured I might as well pick it up. And it's the UK edition that was there so yeah I'm gonna gonna try this and then I bought Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders this is again like the UK cover I have attempted this once before and I DNF'd it however I attempted the audiobook because everyone is like the audiobook is so good read the audiobook or listen to this as an audiobook and I hated the audiobook I gave up uh, less than 100 pages in. I was so confused. I had no idea what was going on. And I, I, this was before I was very into audiobooks, but as I was hearing about this book when it came out, everyone kept saying how incredible the audiobook was. And since then, I've read a ton of audiobooks, and I have come to learn that I do not like multiple narrators for audiobooks. I find it very distracting. I find that people... I can't differentiate people's voices as much as I can def differentiate one person making multiple voices for people, and it gives me more context clues, so I was very confused. I've, I've been considering re-picking this up physically for a while and uh, just hadn't done it, so when I saw it for cheap, I was like, let's get this done. Okay, one more book I bought from there was A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hosseini. I read... Which one did I read? I, I have read The Kite Runner as a teenager for school. Don't remember anything about it. Don't think I liked it at the time. But I just read And the Mountains Echoed last year. Absolutely loved it. It sounds like this has a similar situation where it's um, it takes place over the course of many years. So um, And the Mountains Echoes was like connected short stories almost. Like you were following a lot of different people and they were like loosely or tightly connected. And it sounds like this is similar and it takes place against the volatile events of Afghanistan's last 30 years, from the Soviet invasion to the reign of the Taliban to post-Taliban rebuilding. So, um, and the Mountains Echoed wasn't an easy read, but there was something so like beautiful about it. And I've been wanting to read his other books. So I'm going to this and then I'll probably read The Kite Runner last. That's all I got from that place. I'm telling you, it was really good. Uh, if you're ever in New Hampshire and you go to Plymouth, 
go to ladders because it wasn't just that. That was great. They had a huge yarn collection. It was, it was just a great, great place. I got a shirt that was pretty cool. Okay. And then we went to a new bookstore, which we rarely do, but we were already going through the town and we were like, fuck it, why not? And I didn't get anything because I have this thing where I'm like, what if I end up finding it used later for like a few bucks? So, and I spent full price on something. So I didn't get anything and we were on our way out and they had arcs that you could just take because you're not supposed to sell arcs. And they had an arc for Beautiful World, Where Are You? Which by Sally Rooney, which is one of my more anticipated books. I don't read a ton of front list as it's coming out, but I've read Sally Rooney's two previous books, loved them both. So I was very excited to find this arc and I think it came out last week. So yeah, I'm probably gonna pick this up relatively soon. I'm very excited for this. And then I went to a bookstore on the way home as we were like driving through the state. And at that point I had bought a lot of books. So I was like, okay, maybe I got to cool it a little bit. And I got just one, Women Talking by Miriam Taos, Miriam Taos. This is based on real events. Women Talking is the story of eight women in a remote Mennonite colony who face an agonizing decision in the aftermath of aftermath of a series of unspeakable sexual crimes. Uh, it's, I, I recently made a video about cults and books about cults, and this is one that I didn't mention in the video because I haven't read, but has been on my radar, so I decided to pick it up. I like that it's centering around women. It's the centering of women in a story that is about the uh, transgressions against women, so I'm, in, in, I'm interested in the premise. So looking forward to picking this up. And then those are all the books I bought used. Um, and I did, for the first time, I bought some books from Waterstones online. So this is a vacation haul, but you know, I'm just gonna throw this in there as a bonus. I bought some books that I couldn't get here in the US. Uh, the first one is Five Days of Fog by Anna Freeman. So Anna Freeman wrote The Fair Fight, which is, a great book. I absolutely loved it when I read it. Uh, it takes place in Victorian England, and it is about um, it is about oh, like uh, a few different people in different places in society, and a female boxer and um, like fighting rings in Victorian England. And it was just it was really well done. There are multiple character perspectives. And they all would see the same incident, but have like totally, you never felt like you were repeating scenes. I don't know, I felt, thought it was very well crafted. I had seen her compared to Sarah Waters and I had read that before I had read Sarah Waters. And now that I have read Sarah Waters, I could definitely see the comparison. And this is her other book, which is not nearly as popular, called Five Days of Fog. This great smog descends on London overnight. A leadership feud breaks out amongst a gang of female thieves who have terrorized the city for years. And Flory, the girl who is set to inherit the bloody crown, falls in love with a good boy. Can she find her own path and the courage to stumble along it in a fog so thick that she can't see her own feet? So I'm hoping it's going to be really good because I loved her first book. So looking forward to reading this. And then I've seen this um, in a few different spaces on booktube. This is a Persephone edition of Despised and Rejected by Rose Alatini. This is a classic that is very openly queer and that's really what intrigued me about it. I think it's queer and it's like the authors or, or the there's characters openly against the war. So this is published in early 1900s, let's see. First published in 1918, and yeah, this edition is really beautiful. I've only seen them in videos, but actually getting to physically feel it is nice. It's a paperback, but it has like a dust jacket to the same book. But yeah, it has a really nice like feel in your hands, and it feels really well made, so excited to have this. And then I bought uh, the 10th anniversary edition of A Song of Achilles. I absolutely love, oh, did my lighting change a bunch? It is super cloudy outside. I absolutely love Song of Achilles when I read it. I just thought it was such a beautiful book, so well crafted. I loved the characters. I love everything she did. It was just, it was just 
I, I was just obsessed with that book. I got multiple people to read it in my personal life when I read it. They all really loved it. So I decided to get the um, 10th anniversary edition. It's like gold on it. This is the front cover. It is a naked hardcover. It's like that matte feeling naked hardcover. And it has a new forward by the author. I didn't get the one that was signed, but that was available. And it said it was a pre-order, but it came already. So that's interesting. Uh, let me just... Uh, this is this is the um, U.S. edition. I think I've always thought it was pretty ugly. Um, but yep, they're the same size. They're similar in color. That's the difference in the spines. So yeah, if you're interested in getting this, they are available through Waterstone right now. Okay, it is getting very dark and stormy looking outside. I, I think I've gone through all the books I bought. Um, let me know if you've read any of these, what your thoughts are on them. Uh, have you explored New Hampshire at all? And if not, do you plan on going to used bookstores while you're there? Anyway, I will see you in the next one. Happy reading. Mm -hmm.